Hello, so today I wanted to go over some must-know Godot functionalities. Functionalities that are so beneficial to all developers, how to use them, when to use them, and everything in between. Some are pretty basic, but others are a little more hidden, so you may not know about them. And these functionalities have helped me in my game dev journey tremendously. So maybe you'll learn something new or this video can act as a refresher to your Godot knowledge. If you could also subscribe to help other aspiring game developers, then it would mean the world. But let's begin. So let's begin simple. There is more than just the basic print statement. As you know, we can print a value to the output mainly for testing our code. But did you know that in real time you can print the entire scene's hierarchy by using the print tree or print tree pretty functions? You can even find every orphan node in your project by just using the print orphan nodes function and it will list every node that isn't currently in the scene tree. Next, I want to dedicate a portion of this video to Godot logic functions. For example, lerp, which is set up with a start and end value, in this case 5 and 10, and it creates a smooth transition between two values by a certain amount, in this case 0.5, and the output looks something like this. Also remember to make use of lambda functions. So for example, instead of doing just nums.sort, we can do nums.sort custom and insert our own lambda function. So if we wanted to sort the values from greatest to least instead of least to greatest, then we can say func x y return x greater than y, and the output looks like this. Another useful function that can make use of the lambda function is the filter. It basically returns all the values that match the criteria criteria of the lambda function. So this function here will only return even values. And as you can see, if we run it, then that's what happens. Also remember some of the other functions that are important like max, min, any, all, round, sill, floor, randf range, and randi range. And also it's good to call randomized in the ready functions. But more information on those can be found in the Godot docs as it explains all those and more really well. There are so many different logic functions, so I recommend going and checking them all out, but I don't want to waste your time here, so link to the documentation would be down below. Also make sure you remember how to make a simple loop. For i n however many times we want to loop, print rand i range, which is going to print a random integer through the ranges of 1 to 50. And if we run the output, you're going to see that it's going to call the print function 10 different times. I know all this is simple, but these are all functions that are used so much in Godot. Now this next tip is a quick tip, but always remember that Godot has the documentations built into the engine and all you have to do is either click F1 or inside of a script, click on this search help bar button at the top. The docs are so helpful and I still use them for almost every project I work within. It'll give you such a better understanding of the engine, so just use this as a friendly reminder to use the documentations. If you have to make changes to your game and see how they appear when the game is running, then running the game over and over is going to become very tedious. But with the use of the Godot debugger, we can make any change made to a scene or a script appear instantly without making us close and rerun the game. And this is done by enabling the synchronized scene changes and the synchronized script changes. This is very useful when having to test out a bunch of small little changes because you can see how they affect the game in real time. Now carrying on with the debugger, it is known that Godot has a high level debugger, but at the same time most people don't understand how to use it or just straight up don't use it. So let me give you a very quick tutorial on it. If we open the debug tab in the top left, we see different options. Here we can turn on visible collision shapes and in game it looks like this. The collision shape on the right is enabled and the one on the left is disabled. Same goes for paths, navigation, and avoidance spots. Down here we can run multiple scenes at the same time and this will just run multiple instances of that scene. I will mention how this could be important in just a second when we check out the debugger panel. But some other debugger methods are if we click next to a line of code it adds a breakpoint so the game will automatically stop when it gets to that line. We of course have print statements that help with debugging within the output and at the bottom of the engine next to the output panel we have the debugger panel which is so useful as it shows errors and can give feedback on so many other statistics that are so important to the game running smoothly. As you can see, if we have multiple instances of the scene running in our debugger, we can get all the different information for all the scenes with these different tabs. I'll leave a link in the description to a page that explains debugging a lot more. Auto loads are very important in Godot if you want to add something in the global scope, because if you make a script and auto load, then it preserves that data in a global scope. It loads into the main scene loop before everything else and allows every other script in the game to interact with the functions and variables within the script that has been auto loaded. It is how you create a global script or maybe a more specific example would be a player variable script. We can store all the player variables and access those and change those variables in any other script within our project. Now, I just want to briefly explain why GDScript works so well with Godot, and that's because it was made specifically for Godot. GDScript is a variation of Python that has been modified specifically for the Godot engine, so they work hand in hand with each other. So it makes it easy for beginners to learn and pick up compared to other game engines. GDScript also works perfectly with the Godot node system. 
So whether it's sending signals, making use of the pre-built functions within the nodes, or connecting everything together, it is so much easier with GDScript because it is the language that was built specifically for that. I recommend using the GDScript if using Godot, and I hope this video was able to shine some light on the must knows within the GD script. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.